I think the retail sales number perhaps a standout in terms of the miss, but still broadly showing momentum here. Are they not uh, ultimately here, Jen? Uh, well, I think the continued improvement or recovery in the Chinese economy should be widely expected. But the question is really how much and from uh, which uh, demand drivers. I think that's what uh, um, we wanted to get more from uh, today's data release. And in fact, we did see that retail sales uh, continue to disappoint, right? As you just described, I haven't got to see the data. So that is actually quite consistent with the uh, Labor Day holiday data. Well, in the May long uh, late holiday that we see that, well, the willingness of the public to go out have already returned to pre-COVID level back in 2019, even post a slight increase, 3.2%. But the actual overall spending have contracted still 23% below. Right, so that is actually what caused us to be more concerned, and uh, we've uh, been writing about uh, you know the consumption continue to lag the recovery, despite some other uh, positive say export surprise. Well, you know, it's all about dual circulation, is it not? Uh, and it's all about reviving what's going on, or should I say, putting the emphasis on uh, indigenous spending, retail sales, and the like, personal consumption, Jen. But I mean, again, these numbers are skewed by base effects a year on year numbers, at least. And we'd have to delve right down into them, find out what's actually the, the sticking point, Jen, at the end of the day. But uh, what does it tell us? I mean, perhaps we're just lagging a little bit because these numbers are pretty healthy, nonetheless. Uh, well, clearly, I think the Chinese overall, the Chinese government has managed the COVID situation reasonably well, right? So the economy were returning uh, to normal on, on the path uh, since uh, already second half of last year. So, but but if we look at the two-year average in Q1, that was five percent, right? Remember, according to the at least the government uh, published GDP figure. The 5% was still falling short to be below the 6 day, 6.5% pre COVID. So I think overall, China will continue to grow. And it, the significant credit tightening at the beginning of the year will lead to a sharp deceleration in credit growth, which we forecast could fall to 10, uh, 10 to 10.5% this year. But that will not stop the economy to continue to recover, let's say 8.5%. I think that's the, cup, that's the number that will be feel comfortable by the government. But on the two-year average, I think Chinese growth likely will be slightly below potential growth or pre-COVID growth this year. Uh, I'm just wondering how challenging the environment, the outlook will be, given that there's so much uncertainty still when it comes to how the SMEs are recovering. Also, in terms of uh, job creation, and now the government has said it is concerned about surging raw material prices. Yeah, I think we can be sure that these two issues that you just mentioned are really on top of the leader's mind and the government's mind. I think number one is this rising raw material price and uh, have really been uh, hurting a lot of the small media enterprise and uh, squeezing out industrial profits for many of the downstream sectors and also wiping out the, 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 the profits that they've gained. Uh, for many of the like uh, furniture and paper making, steel industry and etc., to name a few. So I think we've seen the government have been taking some actions. They've adjusted some uh, in export tariff and they've also been uh, looking into some administrative measure, which will obviously would bring some distortion, but that's some at least a short term that the, some of the actions are taken by the government. And on the other hand, also manufacturing investment have continued to be the a weakest link of in, in the recovery, which is uh, lagging on the two-year average, is still in contractionary territory. And so I think that's an area that uh, continue will receive a lot of attention and a lot of uh, support and, uh, from the government and to see whether they can revive the um, private uh, sentiment and also support the private oh, enterprise. Add to that mix as well, Jen, uh, rising financial risk. I mean, we're seeing uh, a rise in uh, how housing prices, for instance. That is another, another worry. Right. I think one thing for certain is that the housing tightening measure will continue to be in place. But if you look at the latest data, the long-term household loan continue to be robust, although the home sales uh, is uh, soft softening and still at uh, kind of a uh, solid pace. 
so there are some uh, supply demand, I think, uh, factors at play supporting uh, the, the overall on the ground, the real estate market, but the government tightening measure will for sure to stay. I think there is a consensus for a while that the housing boom not only have led to a resource misallocation, uh, but also have been crowding out the Chinese household consumption, and which is a big structural issue for China.